Omega, the yeast manufacturer, says that you're supposed to be able to brew lagerish beer with this ale strain. It's a single strain quike, which they pinched from their OYL091. So, let's just try it out. This is a grain to glass video, and if you are new to all of these terms, that means that we We'll get to see when I brew the beer and we'll actually come back and taste the beer in the end and not just uh, yeah, see a, a half complete video. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I have the right glass for it. I decided to brew a Lutra Kvike Pilsner. So I will go and uh, fill up the, the glass while you watch the brew footage. And also hidden away somewhere in this iPad, I have the recipe, so we can go through that. The recipe is already up on my Patreon site, of course. And big shout out to today's sponsor, Brewgoat. I'm Dr. Hans, this is Dr. Hans Brewery. If you want to learn with me how to come better at beer and brewing, consider becoming a subscriber and do hit that little bell so you get notifications when I put out a new video. And of course, like the video, share and all of that. Another brew day, it's hot here in Sweden. Uh, expecting like 31 degrees Celsius at least. We have like the same temperature indoors also in the brew shed. So it's a good day to brew with Quike. I got my hands on the Lutra Quike. Uh, it's a single strain from the Hornedal Quike. Should be good for like pseudo lagers, fake lagers. So let's brew a Lutra Quike Pilsner. Simple grain bill. 4.2 kilos of. Uh, I will go through the recipe later in, in percentages as well because that's a better way to like share recipes, 4.2 kilos of Pilsner. And uh, this is like a fancy Swedish Pilsner. So I have set my efficiency down a bit. It's one of those old school Pilsner's malts. So 4.2 kilos of Pilsner malt, 300 grams of wheat. And I know, yeah, I shouldn't be putting wheat in it, but it's just for some head retention. Of course it makes it a little bit hazy, but yeah. And I used 100 grams of biscuit malt also to get into some like biscuity, nutty tones and just to make the recipe a little bit more fancy. Let's get this crushed. Let's get some epic close-ups. So starting at 67 Celsius. And we're live streaming today on Patreon and uh, the membership, YouTube membership. You want to see some mash porn? Yes, you do. Okay, so giving this uh, a good stir now, starting this at 67. And uh, I will recirculate some manual, because everything is manual now. My brewing system the most of it is broken but it still makes good beer of course but yeah we'll upgrade soon to a new system and yes a bigger system so i will give this a really good stir now and uh, then i will come back in like 50 minutes to give it a, a second stir so we don't have any like dough balls. We are recording. Nice. Uh, whew. Super hot. Have been mashing now for 80 minutes. I was thinking this fancy old school specialty malt might need, not specialty malt, but yeah, yeah the base malt, the Pilsner, might need some extra time maybe. So I've been going for 80 minutes. It's now time to raise up the temperature, start heating up our sparge water. You want to have a look? Yes, of course you do. Come over here. Was that what you wanted to see? I'll raise the temperature up to 76-ish. Actually, we set this at uh, 80, because I'm not doing circulations with the pump. I'm doing manual setting this to 80, so we get up a little bit hotter, because super hot. Wart are looking lovely. 
I will show you. Okay, I don't like this splashing, but it is what it is. Don't brew beer like this. Ooh! And don't film it. Yeah, um, this video is sponsored by Brogoat. Brogoat is a Swedish homebrew supplier with a base here in Stockholm, Sweden, but they ship like everywhere, at least all over Europe. So yeah, go and check them out. First link down in the description. Back to uh, Dr. Hans and brewing of the Lutra Quake Pilsner, and then we'll meet up here and try the beer. I wanted to try it. <laughs> it's time to raise up the grains. Yeah, that also. And set the temperature to boiling. I'm gonna start this at 2500 watts. As soon as we're out to a boil, I'm gonna lower it to 1800 watts. I don't want a big, massive rolling boil. I have no problem with DMS. So, 60 minutes, and we will. I will probably like always spot you a bit, so we will boil it a little bit longer than 60 minutes, more or less. I don't just want to raise up the whole pipe, have all the, the splashing and dripping, so taking it slow, trying to keep a um, couple of centimeters, an inch of water over the grain bed and uh, monitor down here if I need to raise up the pipe, trying to keep the end of the pipe under the wart line. And I will continue to sparge this up and move this up little by little. You don't need to see everything. Okay, sparging is done. Let's take this off before we have an accident. Ooh! I think we are actually boiling under there. I need, what are you guys calling them? I need my slotted spoon. I like to skim off this dirty. I wanted to do it a little bit earlier, but yeah, it's more satisfying when it's actually, as you see, starting to boil below down here. I'm still on 2,500 watts. So I will lower that to 1,800 watts. I don't want to to boil it too hard. It only darkens the beer and I want this to be a bright beer, light in color. I have a mark here which is max, can you see it? I will boil it down to that mark and then I will start our timer for 60 minutes so we will boil it a little bit later. Actually this will more like simmer than actually be boiling. See if we can keep the insulation on. Because I just want like a slow simmer. DMS escapes very easy, so it's not an issue really. Okay, we have been boiling for a while, down to the max mark there. Here we have 20 grams of pearly hops, goes in at... Should we use hop spider? Why not? Let's use a hop spider. 20 grams of pearly goes in at 60 minutes. Boom! Let's start the timer. 20 minutes left of the boil, in goes the second hop addition. We have 15 grams of halitamite through 15 grams of pearly hops going in. Nice. Also, we should add some pruta flock and yeast nutrient. Half teaspoon of yeast nutrient going in, like 19 minutes. <laughs> Did it break? No, we're fine. And also one milliliter of Pruta Flock going in also. You should maybe like stir that in also. Okay, 60 minutes are up. Flame out. Let's add the hops, final addition, put the lid back on and start chilling this. The water comes from my nearest lake. It is about 
25 degrees Celsius, so it won't get super cold. But I actually brewed a beer yesterday and I got that down to 31C, which will be perfect for today. Okay, so we have chilled uh, the wort down to 30 Celsius. Doesn't gonna come any lower than this, but we don't need to because we are fermenting with the Lutra Quike yeast. In the shed is 29 degrees Celsius, so we're very near that temperature. Plastic bag on this to protect against the sun. The gravity here is 1047. On the Lutra bag itself, it says that it should be good for 19 liters of wort up to 1060. I'm gonna have some more wort here, but at a lower OG, so we should be fine. And this wort is super fresh. It's the 26th of June today, and this was packaged 9th, the 17th of June, just one day before my birthday. If you need to know that, really. Okay, let's do this. So, how long time do you think this will take until we can cold crush it and get it into a gloss? Let's get the yeast also. Don't need to wait. Don't wait to add your yeast. So I think I was thinking that this is only single strain, so we don't need to scream, but yeah, I'm live streaming this brew day over at Patreon and it's, it's mandatory, they said. So, we need to scream. As the yeast goes in. And I don't want to disturb the neighbors. That will have to do. Did we get in everything? Not sure. Should we like do this? Just like the extract brewers do. They want to get all of the, the goodies out. Smells sm smells like beer already. Should I save this for the thumbnail? Maybe. I'll wash it. Okay, so uh, almost done. Need to oxygenate it. Will I do the sheet way today also? Maybe. Maybe. How much did we get? Do I have a meter stick on this? Yes, I have. Yeah. Oh, we got 24 liters. 24 liters. That's way more than it's supposed to be. But it's only at... 1047. So we should be good. Uh, and we added yeast nutrient to give this some extra help. We will also use oxygen, but I will do this in the new way I'm uh, just trying out for fun. Really, I have an oxygen stone. It ain't enough oxygen in air to get the amount of oxygen you want. So we're just shaking it. It wouldn't be enough really to get the oxygen amount you want. But if we flush the headspace with oxygen instead, that's another idea. I will be using 35 psi or 2.4 bars because I want carbonated beer. A lot of lube. I wish I didn't have to lube it really, but it is what it is. Where's me? Where's me bottle? There. Let's put some oxygen in here. There should be a lot of oxygen in here now. So if you just close, close this now, the oxygen content in there is so much higher than if it had, would just have been air. So now, okay, close. So, if we shake it now, I know it doesn't look like that good with a plastic bag, but the sun is like screaming over there. Ah! Why am I back to shaking when I have an oxygen stone? I'm so stupid. 
I just want to try this method out. Okay, let's put some pressure on here and I actually mark this. Please do that. Mark your out and in fittings on your firm seal so you don't have an accident. So I've seen accidents in all different ways actually. And that has been one. And that is of course all on you if you make if you will make that mistake so in is here so the five psi 2.4 bars no one remembers, remembers the coward and if you want to learn more about pressurized fermentation, I have a Q&A video about pressurized fermentation. I will link down, down to it below. And I also have a playlist about pressurized fermentation. Spandy 2.0 should have a video up on it, hopefully right now. As this starting to make its own, I will crank it up to about here, which should be like 2.4 bars. This meter will go to 2 bars, 30 psi, but stop ain't until there, so you could just eyeball it. 2.5 bars should be about there, 2.4 bars should be about there. Uh, and I will ferment this at ambient temperature. Ambient temperature right now is 30 C. Awesome. Okay, hope you enjoyed the brew footage. Here we have the, the beer, getting a little condensation on it. It's crystal clear, I hope you can, can see it. And let's taste this, run through the recipe. It sure smells like lager. If it looks like lager, smells like lager, and if it tastes like lager, is it a lager? No, it's not a lager. But you sure could have fooled me. So far, uh, it was a deer. Yeah, there's a lot of wild critters here, including me. Cheers. Oh, should we like comment on the appearance? We have a straw colored beer, one finger, white, Quite tight head, but it was bigger when I poured it, so it has died down a bit. Maybe we could carbonate a little bit more, so maybe I should put some, some gas on it. Really looks nice. Not much on the, on the nose. Get some. malt, light citrusy maybe, but it's, it's faint. Let's, let's just dive in. Cheers. Super clean. Yeah, you could have fooled me. It tastes like, it tastes like lager to me. Uh, with that said, I was actually saying the opposite on, on Patreon. Uh, when I tried this beer super young on like day, what can it be? Patrons can correct me, day four, something like that, straight out of the uh, fermenter. Uh, it was of course super hazy back then. But I, I put some gelatin on it and let it sit uh, in the, uh, the keg and it cleared up, clean, cleared up nicely. But one, when it was uh, super young, like, like I said, on day four, five, and yeah, it was more like an ale to me than a lager, but with a little time on it, it can really f f fool me that this was brewed with, with lager yeast. Really nice beer. So first tip here today is try to like 
lager this for one and a half week, something like that, in the keg. Let it, let it clear. And if you want to have crystal clear beer, gelatin is a fast way to do it. I will link down uh, below to a video where I show how I seal transfer gelatin liquid or uh, it could even be like a hop tea, something like that. Super easy method. Okay, let's run through the recipe so I can give you some, some numbers. You want to know something about the, the yeast first? So it's a single strain quike yeast. Temperature range 68 to 95 Fahrenheit or 20 to 35 Celsius. Attenuation 75 to 82 percent. Alcohol tolerance 11 percent ABV. So yeah, sounds like a beast. And this package should be good for like a five gallon 19 liter batch up to 1060 OG. Uh, and I didn't make a starter. You saw that in the video. I just pitched it right in and I had more beer than 19 liters. I had like 24 liters if I remember correctly. But it was a 1047 OG and not 1060. And this is was like super fresh. Like, uh, what, what was it? Like nine days, something like that from packaging to me pitching it. The recipe for this is already up for the patrons in the big Dr. Hans recipe book. Put it in the lager and then a folder pseudo lagers because it ain't a lager but I didn't know where to put it. I used one of those fancy old school Swedish uh, pills the malt and I don't remember the, the name of it. Uh, but for base I used pills the malt 4.2 kilos or about 91%. I used 300 grams of wheat malt. Yeah, it cleared up. Anyway, everything will clear with time or gelatin. Uh, that's uh, 300 grams or 6.5%. I used 100 grams of biscuit malt, 2.2%. And uh, that was just to use up some malt. Really? And as I, I think I said that when on the brew day to make recipe a little bit fancy. I mashed this for 80 minutes at 67 Celsius and did a mash out at 76 Celsius for 10 minutes. Fermented this at like room temperature fluctuating between 25 and, and 30 but I used a little heat in the air on day, t day 3 to put it up to 30 was fermented at there was a bug fermented at 35 psi or 2.4 bars i added 20 grams of pearly hops at 60 minutes i added 15 grams of halatu and 15 grams of pearly at 20 minutes and i flame out the same additions 15 15 halatu mitofru and pearly hops and i also used some frutaflock and yeast nutrient around 50 minutes, something like that, and pitched directly one package of the Lutra Quike. Fill the headspace with, uh, yeah, you saw that, fill the headspace with, uh, yeah, we should look at more numbers. Fill the headspace with oxygen and shook it. Don't peek at my pin code. How many times do I have to tell you that? OG1047, FG1010. So, Nice. So this comes in at 4.9% ADV. Nice. I have a second video coming. Um, brewed another lager with the, uh, with the same yeast on that yeast cake. So we'll see if we will make a grain to glass video of that also. If you found this video helpful or amusing or in any way a good experience, consider supporting me on Patreon or channel membership or just buy me a beer, all links down below. If you haven't already, consider becoming a subscriber. Do hit that little bell so you get notifications when I put out a new video. And of course, like, share and all of that. Thank you so much for watching. Dr. Hans out. See you in the next one.